The month of March has begun. Let the madness commence. Let's break out the yellow and blue. The men's and women's Summit League basketball tournaments are here. Our guest on today's episode of Between Classes needs no introduction because he usually makes his own during his broadcasts. Tyler Merriam has been the lead voice of the Jack Rabbit Sports Network, producing radio play-by-play for football, men's basketball, and baseball. He is on the show today to speak about Jackrabbit athletics and what students can expect from the upcoming tournaments. Thank you for being here today, Tyler. My privilege, Heidi, to do that all off the top of your head was just amazing. So (laughs) complimentary to you. (laughs) Not as good as you, obviously. (laughs) Tyler, you clearly have a storied history with South Dakota State. You know, you clearly do play-by-play for us, but you also are an alum of SDSU. For people who may not know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so grew up in Pierre, South Dakota, the beautiful capital city of this wonderful state and came to SDSU as a student in the fall of 2003 and basically never left and was lucky enough to kind of ride the coattails of some very talented people. Uh, shortly after Justin Sell got hired as the director of athletics in the summer of 08, uh, he arranged to find a way to, to bring me back and keep me around. And I've basically been here ever since in a variety of roles. And of course, as you mentioned, the play-by-play aspect has certainly been at the top of that, but with our media relations side of the house and, and video, and we've done a TV show for a while and so many other things. It's just been, it's been a fun ride and Brookings is my home. I have a wife, Jill, a son, Joseph, who's eight, Jackrabbit Joe, as some people may know. And, and so we're just along for the ride and having a blast. You've been covering basketball for how long? Uh, Well, of course, as a student, I did a variety of things, so covered it in some way, shape, or form, but did women's basketball play-by-play for three years, got to follow them uh, with some amazing seasons. That would have been the 09, 10, and 11 years, and I guess I've been doing men's basketball since, so this would be the 11th year, uh, if my math is correct, covering the men. So you have been watching basketball for a long time, and you've been watching both these teams all year, and Mm -hmm. they've been having really great seasons. Tell Mm -hmm. me about their seasons. What is special about both of these men's and women's teams? Well, first off, just the fact that it's 35-1 and one in Summit League play. I mean, uh, an undefeated regular season for the men, first time in the 40 years of the Summit League that's ever occurred, a perfect regular season in conference play. And this is a, a men's team that is doing it with tremendous balance. Certainly, Baylor Shireman and Douglas Wilson are the two names that jump out to the top because they're potential first-team all-leaguers, but they're a team that has a lot of guys that can contribute. They play an up-tempo, fun style. They have the best three-point shooting percentage if they keep pace through the postseason since the mid-90s in Division I men's basketball. I mean, it's remarkable what they've done offensively. On the women's side, they're an exceptional offensive team too, top 10 in the nation in a number of categories. They had so much they dealt with in the fall and the winter, and to battle through that and to only lose one game in the league and be co-regular season champs is a tremendous accomplishment in their own right. So it's hard to win Division I basketball games. It's hard to win on the road in league. And you stop and look at what they've done. I mean, it, I don't think they get enough credit for what they have accomplished because 35 and one is just, it's almost unbelievable. And the fact that students and fans get to witness this right now and watch at the Summit League tournament pretty close to home, it's a pretty big deal. It certainly is a big deal. And of course, a big reason why both these teams have had the success they have had is because of the student fan base and because of the alums and because of the adult fan base. I mean, the Jackrabbit men have the best home winning percentage in Division I men's basketball over the past decade. They've had seven undefeated seasons at home out of the last 11. That doesn't happen any place. Else, whether it's Gonzaga or Michigan or you name the school, it doesn't happen. And it's happened here. And the fans deserve so much credit for that. And then the Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls, where that Summit League tournament will be. I mean, if the bracket holds and you get the all South Dakota women's championship game, you're going to have 10,000 plus people on a weekday afternoon watching women's basketball. And there are conference tournaments in bigger leagues that don't get that many people for the whole tournament. And they're going to show up on a Tuesday afternoon to watch SDSU and USD if history repeats itself and if that's how it plays out. And the men's games have always drawn very well. So it really is, it's a tremendous atmosphere. It's second to none. And uh, it's an exciting time as we get ready for it. 
So the Summit League basketball tournaments begin on Saturday, as you said, at the Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls. Those who are attending, what can they expect? I know it's the 40th year, the Summit League, so they're kind of trying to throw it back to the 80s. We'll see how that goes. There has been an 80s theme all year, a little retro theme to it. And so if you played Atari video games, some of the fonts you'll see on social media will look familiar. I don't know how many out there even know what Atari is, <laughs> yet alone ever played the darn thing. But uh, no, what they can expect is a lot of yellow and blue. I mean, it really becomes sort of a, a frost south and it becomes an event. And that's always the thing, right, is, is that people will come to games, but they really come out for events. And the Summit League Tournament has become an event and people book their entire you know, winter schedules and spring schedules around being in Sioux Falls for those few days and the success over the years that men's and women's basketball have had there has been second to none in this conference. And we go back to the fan base and what they do for it. And and I can tell you, the conference loves the fact that SDSU comes out like that. The television partners love it. I mean, the atmosphere in that building, it has a true big time feel. And, and even the NCAA tournaments, it's different because you have some fans that are diehards, but you have a lot that are just there to watch the tournaments. At the Summit League Tournament, you have such a diehard fan base there that it really is a secondary home court advantage. And so it is special. And I think it's even going to be bigger this year because they didn't have fans last year, but they do now. And it's looking like it'll be a pretty good turnout. Weather is supposed to be pretty decent, too. Yeah, you're exactly right. And we've seen that kind of all year here at SDSU, too, that having the ability to bring fans back after not being able to have them in the year before. I think everybody's relished this opportunity. They've been yearning for these moments and now they're able to have it because, like we said, it's an event. It's not just coming to watch two hours of a basketball game, but it's getting to sit in the those seats that have become your seats at the tournament with so-and-so who lives down the street and this guy who you went to college with and and this crew over here that uh, you you went on vacation with 10 years ago and became friends with and now you do all these things with. That's, it's such a unique collection of people. It's a coming together and that's what makes it so special. And Jackrabbit Nation has led the charge in that regard and we're certainly hoping they will again this week. Absolutely. And you say it's, you know, an experience. It's an event. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just go to watch good basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, They do a lot of things like giveaways, pap rallies. The pride is usually there. And so is Jack the Jackrabbit, one of Joe's favorites. Uh, Tell me a little bit more about the experience. You know, if you go to the Premier Center or the Convention Center that day, you're just pretty much wrapped in in an all-day experience. Well, you have to remember the Denny Sanford Premier Center is attached to the Sioux Falls Convention Center, which is attached to the Sioux Falls Arena. And so they utilize all of those buildings in some way, shape, or form. And then, like you said, you've got all the bands there. And so before the SDSU games, the SDSU Athletics uh, pep band is is walking around and you'll hear them tuning up or they might come over and get somebody fired up at a pep rally. And there's always a, a pep rally next door at the Sheridan before each game. And then there's some other smatterings of people around. They might get together at a separate restaurant or whatnot. Sometimes people just do their own pep rallies. Uh, so there's all these different things that factor in. And then, of course, as the doors open and people start to file in, then you really start to get the feel and the juices start to flow. And, you know, it's kind of like when that chicken isn't quite done in the oven, but it's close enough. You can smell it and it makes your mouth water and you know it's coming. You're waiting for the ding. The ding is the tip off and the 20 minute clock for the first half starting. And then you can open up the oven and the salivating can end and the taste can begin. I know you've covered many Summit League tournaments. What are you looking forward to this year with this particular one? Well, I think first and foremost, to have everybody back. You know, last year, having it in the Sanford Pentagon, it was a means to an end. We needed to do it that way to be able to put it on safely within the restrictions and protocols that we were at the moment. But part of the fun is getting to see everybody. And I know you can understand this, Heidi. You make friends in business, right? And so there are so many people throughout the league that that are friends of mine. Some are very dear, close personal friends and we have family connections to that you get to see periodically when you go on the road and you might only get to see them for a small amount of time. We're here, you get to hang out and talk to them a lot more and to see all these people in one setting. And then so many Jackrabbit fans, some of whom you get to see, I get to see here and there, but again, I don't get to sit with them, you know, and I don't have an off season. So it's like the men's basketball coach might be able to see him during a football game. I can't really do that. So there are some times that I get to experience these folks. And sometimes I pop out in the, in the lobby because we need to get something for a video piece and people will stop by and I get to, Hey, I haven't seen you in forever. Here's a high school classmate of mine that's in town and she sees I'm over here and she comes over and says, hi, that happened a couple of years ago. Those are cool things that just, they only happen in South Dakota. They only happen around here. 
year. And so that first and foremost is what I'm looking forward to is just all those friends, uh, whether they're dear, close personal friends, you feel like they're extended family members, whatever, getting to see them. But then obviously on top of it, to see the turnout of Jackrabbit Nation, that is such a fun part of all of this because it really does kind of feel like our home away from home. And knowing how good these teams are to see what they can do uh, on that stage. I'm excited for Douglas Wilson. You know, Douglas got hurt late in the year two years ago, didn't get to play in the tournament game in that building. Last year it was in the Pentagon. He's never played in that environment. So for him to be able to play in the Premier Center in the tournament because he was hurt two years ago, that I'm so excited for, to see Maya Selen back in that environment. Those are the things that, that give me goosebumps as we sit here talking about it. Yeah, they definitely brought goosebumps to my arms because I didn't even like think of that. The Summit League basketball tournaments, unfortunately, usually happen over spring break. So sometimes students can't necessarily go and see it in person. For those who want to follow the tournaments, watch, listen online. Where can they find that? So the first round games on Saturday and Sunday, of course, the Jacks will play on Saturday and then semifinal games on Monday should SDSU move on in both uh, air on Midco Sportsnet. And so Midco Sports, uh, that channel is available on on various cable systems, uh, including uh, the ones here in Brookings, whichever one you have. And then on top of that, whether it's ESPN Plus or the Midco Sports Plus or apps, if you subscribe to one of those, you'd have access to championship games on Tuesday. The women's game is on ESPNU. The men's game is on ESPN2. Most people, if they get television coverage, get those channels. So you'd be able to watch those. Now, of course, we have the extensive coverage throughout the Jackrabbit Sports Network, our affiliates, the Varsity Network app, the Jackrabbit app, which I know everybody listening already has. And if you haven't, shame on you and get it. Go to gojacks.com slash app to find out more. The Jackrabbit app will have the live audio of every broadcast. And so that's another avenue. And then, of course, tickets are still available, uh, whether it's general admission seating or student tickets. And there's information on our social media pages on gojacks.com or even through the Summit League site on how you can purchase tickets as well. If you want to listen to yours truly, you definitely need a Jack. If you want to listen to yours truly, you definitely need to download the Jackrabbit app. If they want to listen to you, no, you, you said yours Tyler. truly. Yours truly. I'm pointing and looking at yeah, you. Yeah, but yours truly means you, not me. <laughs> See, now you've confused me. And they have they keep up to date with scores. They send good deals after each and every game. The howl for a foul. Yes. We all love that at home games. We want wings. Exactly. And so, if you want to be a part of that, you have to have the app. Just to repeat one more time, the men and women are both number one seeds and they both play first thing Saturday. Yes, they start each session. And so the women's session begins at 1230. The men's session begins at six o'clock. And so the opening game of each of those sessions would involve the Jackrabbit women at 1230, the men at six. And then if they win, they would play at that same time on Monday as well. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today, Tyler, about Jackrabbit basketball and the Summit League tournaments. I'm really looking forward to this year. Thank you, Heidi. It's always a pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me, and I enjoy being had. This is Between Classes. Thanks for listening.